Hi guys, happy Friday. It's Friday already, can you believe it? This week we are going to tackle the bad boy. I'm going to take you through my setup, my prep, all that good stuff. When I started this piece, I really wanted to push the florals and things like that, but I don't know whether it's just me, but don't you get into a habit of making the same marks? You know, you just kind of mentally go, well, that worked last time. The reason it worked last time was because you weren't conscious of it, you weren't thinking about it. It's so hard to explain, it's really hard. I've tried mentally figure it out in my head, but I've never really been able to define what I'm trying to say into words. When I started that piece, I knew that it wasn't going to work. I just just had a feeling but you persist with it anyway you push through you trust the process and you end up with you know with something that you hadn't intended and that's okay since i've had a break from doing canvases and i have been getting on with other stuff as you know guys know you know the struggle that i've had to endure the last few weeks so i'm going to go over some of the stuff that i've done much of which you've seen but i'm going to chat about it in a different way in the context of actually scaling up i'm also going to take you through some of the things that i do in order to prep how i manage that side of it just to make the process a bit less daunting and then we're going to see how much of this we get done this week i very much doubt i will get this finished you just never know i might hit on it first time and it will just be like ah! and you know, it might absolutely not work out that way. But, you know, you gotta try. <laughs> See you in a sec. Okay, so I'm gonna take you through some of the stuff. Right, firstly, I bought this book a while ago. It's basically Emra Williams. It's their abstract journey, essentially. I've just got paint all over that. And at the time I bought it, I flicked through it and it didn't seem relevant. Held on to it nonetheless because there were things in here that I really, really liked. This book is not for everyone because it isn't comprehensive. As you know, I steer away from books that have just one artist unless I absolutely love them and nothing they can do is wrong. It's quite a good book, you know, talks about light in relation to the pieces. Uh, they do a lot of impasto type situations loads and loads of textures takes you through basically their journey and just their little tips and tricks really i think it's a great book when you start reading it this i could have done with this a while ago couldn't i do you remember when i bloody stretched that canvas what a bloody nightmare that was really really good at the time i purchased it however this book i felt wasn't relevant to me at the time i i wasn't getting the the surge of inspiration i mean that's lovely colors isn't it that's really really nice actually uh but yeah so i thought it i thought this was going to be something different than what i ended up with but when i flicked through this book i absolutely loved the uh, in pasto, the kind of, I mean, this is acrylic on canvas, on canvas on board, you know, absolutely beautiful. Oh, God, delicious. Not my colourway, it's certainly not my colour, but just in terms of texture and how medium is applied, very, very useful. These were the things that I was thinking about today. <clears throat> the kind of application um these circle things that i really enjoy doing anyway this is what i'm really into and that's why i was thinking about taking my sketches my designs my colorways you know my marks and applying it you know combining them all to this so it's very inspirational i like the fact that the paint is evenly done you've got some transparent bits and stuff it's really really interesting so that's kind of where i've had the page open to inspire me there, there was a piece in here that was utterly inspired right and it was only small i think that's the only bit of it but it was the reason why I actually kept this book was because it was just so inspiring. This is the picture, believe it or not. So basically I think what he's done is paint strips of canvas and I don't know whether he's laid them down on a canvas or on a board and stuck them in a satisfying way or he's done little sculptures. I don't know, but conceptually I think it's a great idea. 
So it says, um, I keep these bits of paint detritus and just creasing and folding them creates unusual forms and notions of colour possibilities. Everything you make, either intentionally or unintentionally, can be useful. And I think that that is basically the foundation of my practice of what I do I'm always looking for new and inspiring ways to just crowbar colors mediums textures together and the only real way to do that organically is just happen upon these things you know I've also got this black book which uh, you saw last week black sketchbook now there's some really beautiful things in here certainly this one actually is what I'm gonna keep it out and you'll see why in just a moment. Tasty, put that to one side. Now, this isn't a piece, right? This is basically me swatching stuff out, all right? And then I would use it to swatch other colors out. So for example, halfway through I might go, oh, this has got potential. I would grab a bit and just pop it on the page to see if it works and actually it does, but I think I need more of that. Ordinarily, I would then have to mix my stuff up and these are what these pots are for on this little tray. So this is a beautiful green. Sometimes what I might do is grab a black and white, okay? So thin it out, see what it looks like. And then I would add a white and then a black to all of them and see how that goes. The point is, is that everything is then pre-mixed. All right, there's, there, I'm not then mixing. Sometimes I might, I might change out a color, but then I know I have at least one or two sessions with me so that I'm not continuously mixing. I use one page to test colors out along and then I do a full swatch of the colors that I'm going to be using. These pages will never go to waste because I'll either work on top of them or paint over them with gesso and use them at a later date. So now that we've got everything set up, let's go to the canvas because there's other steps that we need to bear in mind. My kids are going mental in the background, so sorry about it. Can you see me from there? All I'm doing now is I'm just, I'm literally just sticking with greens. Concentrating on the marks. The other thing that I was concerned about, and I still am, is the uh, yellow and the, the actual flowers was done with sand paint, right? So what you might find is that you're underpainting because it's raised and it's textured, you can see that sand paint come through and you get lines. Now that might be interesting, but it might not be, and you might be able to see like an underpainting. Um, I don't know how I feel about that right now. So I'm just ignoring it. I know that's probably not the best way. It might work out fine. It might be really interesting and therefore we can work with it, but I'm not, I'm not putting any hope on that right now. So you can see this composition coming through. So this is the kind of composition that I wanted to sort of emulate. I might actually keep that there to be fair. Uh, have it closer to me. This is a nice colour. This is actually a mix of yellow and violet. So I'm going for pure abstraction today. No representational work at all. Um, I think that, I think I need to push through that and just be bold about it really. You know, don't be, don't worry. Where's that ochre? Because that's looking really nice. So if I can somehow get rid of some of the marks that I don't like. So obviously this yellow is, this flower's doing my bloody head in. So I'm gonna go really in there now. This is gonna be a controversial one. So you just gotta stick with me, stay with me. The reason why I blocked the bottom and top out in black is to get rid of the previous work. I can work on top of this, but I just want to get it in there. That's really nice actually. Yeah. Bring this corner right down. So all I've done is cut in the black, right? So that will, the black will get knocked back when I start adding more on, but I need to let it dry, otherwise it's gonna mix in. And black, as some of you or some of you may not know, black has a habit of killing color, you know? 
I'm gonna bring this bottom up, but the reason I didn't is because I'll show you. When I was painting and doing my swatches, I swatched this area, which I love. I really like that area and I like the combination of colors. So this will go once I've replicated that throughout the piece. You've got wet paint glare, so I apologize, but you see what I've done is block out. So when you look at this piece here, you can see dots of black where it's obviously been a black background and I've gone on top of the color. You'll have essentially the same effect once I go in with color on there. Um, and you'll, so you can't see what it was now. You've just got a sort of very loose composition across the canvas yeah making bold moves like this is so important for like growth and I've, I've got another couple of pieces in my mind that won't suit this one right enough but will be brilliant for another piece so whilst this sounds dry what i'll more what i will likely do is paint on top of this now and go right well let's let's see if we can't replicate it make more decisions before this bad boy you know, dries and then we've got something else there. So moving around the studio, constantly creating. It's the way forward, guys. I'll see you in a sec when this is dry. See where I'm going with it. You see what I'm trying to achieve. I think it's great. I'm so in love. I'm in love. I need to get some more greens in there. And it won't stay like this. So we'll just keep going and going, adding and taking away. Uh, anyone who works in this way knows that. And in fact, any anyone who works just paints will know that. No matter what their their style is. I'm so happy to be back on the horse. I will continue with this this week and I will more than likely give you an update on this piece on Instagram, Facebook and the community tab as well. Sometimes we just need a break, don't we? We just, it's your mind going, we need to process everything we've done. But I am gonna do a couple of shout outs actually. Uh, Gertrude and Co, hi Gertrude and Co. Well, they recommended Beam is it beam or bream? I think it's beam, watercolour and gouache. Apparently when it dries, it's like fine sand and leaves a lovely texture like in your sketchbook and stuff. Oh, I'm so excited. So when I can uh, do my day job a bit more, recoup some funds and pay for that, we'll get on that. So thank you, uh, Gertrude and Co, for that recommendation. I'm so excited. Um, we've also got Karina who loved the, I don't know whether I can get it because the sketchbook might be wet, but we'll see. Loved last week's uh, grass in the snow. Other people see things that you don't. And uh, yeah, I, I looked back at it and I was like, yeah, that's uh, great marks in there. And I, I like the combination of like paint and the pencils. I like the contrast of textures in that. So I'll be doing some more of that kind of thing on paper. Yeah, thanks to everyone who commented and engaged with me last week. I really appreciate it. It really does mean a lot to me when I get to have conflabs with you all. It really does. But I don't, I'm just coming down with something. What's going on? I'm dying. Anyway, you take care, guys. Thanks for joining me again this week. Uh, I really, really appreciate you supporting me each week. It really does mean the world. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your time off from work. And if you're working, I'm so sorry to have mentioned that, but just find some time for yourself. Find some time for a bit of creativity. I don't care whether it's a doodle on the back of a receipt. All counts, all counts, guys. Anyway, you're the best. Mwah!